Hey everybody, I see people are starting to roll in. Welcome. Uh, my name is Jason. I'll, I'll introduce myself more in detail in a couple minutes here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead to the uh, chat area box while we're waiting for about a minute or so for people to come on in and get settled. Uh, and I'm going to write my name or I'm going to say hello, uh, where I'm at, and my favorite sports movie. So you can go ahead and do the same. All right, Hoosiers, you can't go wrong with Hoosiers. Carson, good call. Dang, I love that movie. Hello, Pablo, welcome. All right, again, I'm gonna give this about another 30 seconds to a uh, minute to uh, make sure we get as many people in as possible before we start, and then we'll get moving here. Lisa, welcome, The Sandlot. Remember many years ago, I thought that would be a kid-friendly movie, and I realized it wasn't, I realized it wasn't. A lot of adult stuff in that, but a great movie nonetheless. Central Port, Oregon. Sandlot is my favorite sports movie. Good call again. Another a lot of Sandlot fans. Does nobody like Rudy? Has anybody seen Rudy? Maybe I'm the only football guy in the, in, in the room here. Another Hoosiers, Caddyshack, classic. Good call, Edward. All right. So thank you for joining, guys. Don't forget, remember the Titans. Remember the Titans is pretty dang good. Pretty darn good. I'm pretty – I'm – I'm almost positive that the uh, high school that uh, that is centered around uh, is uh, the football coaches are on field level. So remember when we saw that, that was pretty neat. Athens, Georgia, welcome. All right. Well, great, guys. I'm glad that you guys have, have joined. And uh, what we're going to do now is I'm going to start uh, moving into our, our presentation deck. Something's off here. Hold on a sec for me, guys. Uh, okay, sorry about that. Uh, give me just one second here as I, as I pull up our presentation deck that somehow uh, disappeared. All right. Now we're in, now we're working here. All right. Present. Now I'm going to share. All right. So here we go. So today we are uh, talking about uh, how to build a, re a winning strategy for your recruitment. Uh, my my name is Jason French. Obviously, I'm an employee here at Field Level, and I've been here for almost two years and loving every second of it. Uh, I really get to I get a chance to. Uh, work within the area of which I've been working in for many years, which is I've been a high school football coach. So getting to work with athletes and parents and coaches, both college and high school and club levels, has been a lot of fun. Uh, coach a long time in LA. Uh, been a part of two city championship uh, programs. Uh, coach uh, multiple uh, college level athletes, uh, guys that have moved on to play professional ball, some NFL, CFL, XFL, uh, arena. Uh, so I've gotten a chance to work with a lot of great great young people over the years. And you know, I also do some clinic speaking for USA football, where I just kind of get to fly around and around the West Coast mainly and uh, teach their curriculum. It's a lot of fun. So today's agenda uh, is we're going to talk about how to refine your options when it comes to recruiting. Uh, then we're going to start talking about uh, the different paths that you can take to get you to a successful point in recruiting. And then uh, talk to you a little bit about field level and then open up for a question and answer time. I asked that uh, in the question and answer time, I'm gonna use that chat area that I just used with you guys at the beginning of this as where I'm gonna field the questions from. Uh, there is a question and answer area in our webinar, like in this, in this platform, but I, uh, I'm not, I like to use only the chat box. So again, there's a little chat uh, bubble there. Um, that's where you guys would be able to throw those questions in at the end. And again, I ask that you wait to the end uh, to ask those questions. All right, let's move forward here. So how to create a winning recruiting strategy is today's, uh, today's topic. All right, so first thing is refining your options. So 
whether you know this or not, there are a ton of options out there. Uh, there's Division One NCAA, NCAA Division Two, NCAA Division Three, the NAIA, which many people uh, in the sport would uh, liken to um, Division Two level athletics. Uh, the NJCAA is a very large uh, junior college association around the country. And then I also threw in uh, the NWAC, which is the Northwest Athletic Conference. Uh, the NWAC is a uh, smaller uh, grouping of co junior colleges in the Pacific Northwest. And uh, they're a great organization that we are working with. Uh, we've been working with for years, but are going to probably be developing a more uh, close relationship and partnership. Um, so there are so many options out there for you and your athletes. And, and I know that today's uh, you know, group that's going to be listening today is going to be mainly parents and athletes. So first, what you guys should be thinking, whether you're a parent or athlete, is what level of play is right for the athlete or you the athlete? Uh, not only is it should you be thinking about the division, are you a division one level athlete? Are you a division two level athlete? Um, do you need to maybe go to junior college first to refine your skills or build up your academics? Whatever the case may be, you should start thinking about those things first, what level you're at. And uh, we're going to have, this is uh, a, a bit of a shameless plug here, we're going to do a, another webinar this month about is the D1 life right for me? And I'm going to talk with uh, one of my colleagues, Taylor Grigsby, uh, who played uh, Division One baseball and I played uh, Division Three football. So we're going to get together and we're going to talk about, you know, the different the differences of playing at these different levels and what to think about when, when considering what level to play at. We'll get we'll do more of a deep dive on that. Uh, we're going to do that on August 15th. I'll send you the link to that uh, webinar uh, tomorrow in our follow-up emails. Uh, the next thing is you, what you should be doing is after you've thought about yourself, what level of play can you play at? Uh, what conference also you want to play at? Because, uh, you know, within certain divisions, there's different conferences that are more competitive than others. So figuring that out as well. You should be talking to your coach about this. Uh, it is important very important to make sure that you and your coach are on the same page when it comes to your level of play. Um, also, you know, within that conversation, uh, do you, you want to think about, is it best to go to a division one school and maybe have to sit on the bench for a while, or do I want to play right away and go to a division two or division three? Those are questions to ask yourself and to talk about with your coach. Um, so talking with your coach, that's another webinar that we're going to do this month, August 22nd, how to communicate with your coaches about recruiting. That's going to be a crucial thing to learn going forward, uh, whether you are a, a senior in high school about to start your next, your last year of high school ball, or whether you're an incoming freshman and you're gonna, you want to start learning about recruiting from, from jump. Based on that conversation with your coach is where you can decide what level of play is right for you. So you, uh, you and the coach are on the same page going into this process. Next is once you've figured out what level of play you should be playing at and it would be a good fit for you athletically is where in the country do you want to play so we've got a little maps here a little graphic that we put together division one schools 351 division one programs in our country and those blue little dots signify areas all over the country that there's a division one program the division two ncaa division two 316 schools in division two and look at all those orange dots all over the country Division three, 448 schools. Now, they're all over the country, mainly over in the, in the Midwest into the East Coast, uh, a lot of them in, in, in Texas as well, and then they're scattered a little bit throughout the West Coast, but so many options at the NCAA uh, you know, association that has these different levels of play all over the country. The NAIA that I touched on earlier, 251 schools. The NJCAA, 264 schools, and the NWAC, up north in the Pacific Northwest, 36 schools. So there are options nationwide in areas that you may have never even thought of or considered in your life that you can look into. What I'm gonna do tomorrow, along with those links about the different webinars that we're hosting this month uh, based on uh, is the Division One Life Right For Me, how to communicate with your coach. I'm also gonna send links to these, these different locations to find uh, a map where you can you know, zoom in and find different names of schools and different locations so you can do your research there as well. After you've figured out what level of play is right for you, after you've looked all over the country and figured out where geographically you're interested in playing, next is scholastically, where can you go? 
Uh, we all can, can have uh, aspirations to play at certain schools, uh, but every school has a certain academic uh, requirement and threshold that you need to meet. And do you have those grades to make it in that school? If you have great grades, you're gonna have lots of options, right? You're gonna be able to pick and choose uh, where you wanna go because you know you'll be able to be admitted ac academically into these schools. But if you're bad, if you have bad grades, they're not so great, uh, you're gonna have to find schools that are gonna be more able to take uh, you as a student there as well. Lastly is we're gonna talk about fin the financials of things. Not, we all hear about the athletes that get these full scholarship rides, or many people will even talk about how they're going to a school uh, because of a scholarship. But uh, really, um, there's, there's many schools that do offer full athletic scholarships, but many schools do not offer full athletic scholarships. They're able to offer partial scholarships, or um, different schools are able to piece together different financial aid packages based on your grades or your need-based uh, issues. So another thing, and we're gonna again discuss this uh, in, our, in our webinar this, this month of how to discuss things with your coach about recruiting, but coming to the table about what are, are realistic things to think about about your financial situation. Now, we don't think that you should tell your coaches about your, you give them your tax return or tell them what you make, but you should go in armed with knowing what you're able to afford to pay for school uh, for the athletes, so for you parents uh, in, in, in the webinar today, or you athletes that are gonna have a conversation with your parents, uh, knowing <clears throat> what you guys are able to afford. So let's say a college is $50,000 a year to go to, and your coach is going back and forth with the college, your high school club coach is going back and forth with the college uh, regarding a financial aid package, and that college coach says, I can give them $20,000 um, on, uh, uh, on that financial aid package, but really uh, what they need to do, what you'll need is uh, another extra $10,000 off that. So in order for you to be able to uh, have that, comp uh, that ability to have that negotiating power with uh, these colleges, it's best to make sure that uh, the college coaches uh, know what your, what your financial situation is and that your high school coach can go ahead and, and speak on your behalf on that. <clears throat> so we've talked about level of play. We've talked about geographically where you want to be. We've talked about uh, scholastically where can you go. We've talked about financials. So now that you've kind of narrowed down these things in your mind, you're able to figure out what schools you want to attack. Now, how the heck are you going to get there? So now let's, now let's talk about how um, athletes are seen, how athletes get exposure um, within the recruiting world. First, you are a high level athlete. You're a big time athlete, you're a big time recruit. All the major Division I schools that you've heard about over the years what, that are on TV are coming after you. And what they'll do is they will come to you. And so you are that high-level athlete, and that's great for you, and congratulations. Uh, I'm jealous, uh, but <clears throat> you have to uh, – you're going to – you don't have to – you don't need as much uh, of the exposure and the help as uh, some of the other athletes will. So I got a pictures here of, of these major college coaches from the different, from different sports, and there's a typo here. It's not Nick Saban at the top. Uh, left hand, but that's Dabo Sweeney from the University of Clemson going to visit uh, a, a five-star quarterback uh, from St. John Bosco. That's a picture of him there. And then and Coach Dabo Sweeney's got the paw on his, on his shirt. Uh, the next one, Tom Izzo, one of the most famous college basketball coaches in the country. He's on a recruiting visit with a, with a high, high end recruit um, there in that picture in the right hand corner. Uh, uh, the bottom left picture, that's Kelly uh, Perez. She's the softball coach over at University of uh, Los Angeles, University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA, one of the best programs in the country. They won the College World Series last year for softball. And so she's off on a recruiting visit. She's going to that school and that, that parent or that player's house to recruit them. And then over here, Heather Olmstead, she is uh, one of the, the highest uh, you know, paid, highest level coaches in women's volleyball. Uh, she was very close last year to uh, getting into the championship game. She was in the final four, uh, but lost in the final four. But uh, people were, are considering her probably to be the first woman in uh, Division One volleyball to win a championship here soon. So hopefully she crosses that threshold. But here again, she is with athletes. She will go out and find you, and uh, and they have that budget to go to those major Division One level athletes. So high level athlete, they come to you. Now for the rest of us, right? And I am, and I'm part of that group, right? I was a good athlete, not a major, uh, not a major high level athlete. I wasn't highly recruited. Um, I had to do a lot of my own stuff, and, and I needed help from a coach. Um, so here are other ways that you guys can be seen. 
uh, seen at club tournaments, okay? Uh, you guys have seen it showcased. So a club tournament, uh, your team, your club team is going to these club tournaments and playing in games, basketball tournaments, volleyball tournaments, softball, baseball, soccer tournaments. There are showcases where you go to these events where college coaches come and they're going to watch you and see what kind of skills you have, what kind of skills the athlete has. And so here's a quick picture of an athlete, uh, of a baseball player uh, about to take some batting practice and show off his batting ability. Uh, we were, field level is partners with an organization. We're about to launch this and announce this soon. Up, uh, they have uh, locations all up and down the, the West Coast, but we were in Seattle at a, at a baseball showcase. And so that's an example there. Uh, lastly, you can be seen at camps. Uh, this is a picture of this, a soccer camp uh, where uh, athletes are going to, a bunch of athletes are going to these camps, not getting, only getting instruction uh, from the coaches at these camps, but they're also being seen by college coaches as well. So these are, these are ways for athletes to be seen in this recruiting world. Next is coaches have a personal database, right? Um, you're an athlete, you want to play at a certain school, maybe your coach has a personal connection to that, to that college or that coach. So what are they able to do? They're able to jump on the phone. And if I've ever seen a coach's office, this is the one right here. They're busy. They got a lot of stuff going on. They're on the phones trying to help their, their teachers, their deans, their administrators, their fathers, their wives, their brothers, their sisters. They're so busy, right? And they're on here grinding away for you. And so here's a cool picture of a coach on the phone. He's got a cell phone in front of them. They're probably ready to send out some text messages. But here's another way. Coaches have their own personal database where they're able to contact these coaches because of the years that they've, you know, put into the into their coaching craft and through that meeting people face to face and, and generating those relationships. But then lastly, we're in a tech we're in a tech world, and you guys are here because you guys are in a tech world. I mean, how cool is it that you guys are able to sit here and listen to me talk uh, about this stuff from the from the comfort of your own home or office on a computer screen or your phone? And we are in a tech world, and we at field level have found a way to, and other companies have found a way to use technology for helping athletes find opportunities to play at the next level. So there's three core concepts. I'm gonna, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna talk about the, the names of the two other companies that I'm referencing here, uh, but I'm sure you've been contacted by them at some point in time. The first concept is this sales rep consultant doing yourself uh, method. So a company will. Um, reach out to you and try to generate uh, you as a, as a client of theirs where you would then pay to set up a profile, have a place to store your film. Uh, they would then say that they're going to, on your behalf, be a, an agent or a sales rep for the athlete. And they're gonna go out and get information out to college coaches about the athlete. Uh, in the end, um, and again, not to speak poorly about any of these concepts, uh, but in the end, uh, that, app, that person, that consultant, that is uh, walking you through the recruiting process or uh, saying that they're going to advertise you or sell you or rep you uh, to college coaches it doesn't have that uh, personal relationship with the athlete. Uh, so there's that one concept. The next concept is a do-it-yourself uh, concept. And that's a company will give you, uh, based on how much you pay, a version of their platform where you're able to use all of the um, all the uh, contact information that they provide for you. They'll give you demos on how to write emails, what to send in text messages, how to talk to a coach over the phone or leave voicemails. And it's a do-it-yourself model. Athletes, parents, you do it on your own. Uh, they do give coaches the opportunity to monitor uh, what's going on, but it's not really a coach's platform. It's really a do-it-yourself for parents and, and coach, uh, parents and athletes. And again, coaches can monitor uh, the process. And then us, field level. And uh, obviously, I'm saying this as uh, you, would, you would think I'm biased, but um, I was a user of Field Level well before I became uh, an employee. And what Field Level does is it takes the way recruiting has been done for decades, and we've made it in a more tech-savvy, simple way for coaches to connect nationwide. So for decades, high school coach and college coach meet. College coach comes to a high school and talks to a coach. College coach goes to a, to a to a club facility, meets the coaches, learns about the athletes, and that's how they start generating the interest for these athletes. Well, that's great, and like we talked about before, athletes are able to be seen in these different camps and clinics and showcases and, and different things of that nature and tournaments. And college coaches and high school coaches have built relationships over the years because they're with each other. But if a coach is in one location, in one part of the country as a college coach, and a high school coach is in another part of the location of the country, and they've never had a chance to actually meet in person, they haven't been able to develop that relationship. 
what we've done at Field Level is we've helped these coaches connect. Uh, much like LinkedIn, much like Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, we're connecting people. And what we do is when we connect people, they're able to now connect with each other about not only just becoming being coaches and how to help each other and best practices practices within their sport, but also to communicate about athletes. So now Field Level has built a tool to give to high school club and, and college coaches to connect with each other to ultimately help the athletes find those opportunities to play at the next level. So what Field Level is going to do is they're going to help their athletes. The college coach is going to find athletes. We'll talk about this in a minute. They're going to find athletes through the search method, or they're, and then they're going to contact the high school and club coach about connecting with them. Or the high school and club coach, the most impactful way, is going to send a promotion, what we call a promotion, which is basically a, a recommendation of that athlete to a college coach saying, I really believe that my athlete here and my club or my, or my high school program would be a great fit for your school, for your program, and here's why. And so that's what makes us different from the others is we keep the most impactful person, the most knowledgeable person about that athlete when it comes to that sport and getting them help recruited is the coach. And we know that they're the ones that are in charge of this process. We know that the college coach wants to talk to the high school coach. We know that the college coach wants to talk to the club coach first about an athlete before they start the recruiting process. So we built that tool for them to become, to come together about the athletes. So what you get for free with field level is you're able to build a free profile. You're able to add video to your film for free, uh, to your profile for free. You're able to be promoted to colleges by your current high school club coach for free. Uh, you're able to be, uh, you're able to research colleges using our platform. You're able to set a target school list in our platform, which not only keeps athletes, parents, and coaches organized on seeing everybody being on the same page of where that athlete is interested in playing, but also it gives a college coach a, a ping in, their, in our system, letting them know that an athlete is targeting that school. They don't know what rank they are. They don't know, you know if they're number one on their rank or number 21 on their rank. They just know that they're being targeted by an athlete, which is a great, great opportunity for you to be seen uh, as an athlete as well. And then lastly, uh, college coaches, and I talked about this a minute ago, is college coaches are able to use our search feature in order to go and look for athletes as well on our system. And once they find an athlete they like, they're able to look at their profile, watch their film, connect with that high school and club coach to learn more about the athlete to then start the recruiting process with you guys. So all of that is for free, tons of functionality and benefits. And then we also have a premium plan uh, where we really open up some more key areas in our platform for athletes, parents, and coaches. And the four things that really open up are going to be the ability for you to get recommendations that we provide for you, match strength uh, that we provide uh, for athletes about a, what a college would be a great match strength or recommended uh, for an athlete. Uh, they're also able to now uh, coach and an athlete are able to then be uh, promoted, use promotions to the entire network. So right now for free, your coach is able to promote athletes to college coaches that they're currently connected with. With our free platform, they're able to do all of that, which is great. But with our premium plan, they're able to promote an athlete to anyone in the network. So it can go from their 200 connections to 2,000 or 20,000 based on some of our networks. Uh, so it really opens that door and that window for them to promote and get the athlete as much exposure as possible. Uh, next is the, the letters of interest. Uh, we provide athletes on our uh, premium plan the ability to write three letters of interest at colleges that are on their recruiting, uh, on their uh, uh, target school list. And there's some more uh, details with the, the letter of interest that I can answer later if you'd like. Uh, but uh, yeah, able to write out uh, that letter of interest to those schools, answer two key questions, which is uh, why I want to play for this program, and two, why uh, I want to live in this area geographically. And then lastly, uh, with our, and most, I would say most impactfully uh, in, our, in our platform, when you use premium as opposed to free, you're able to see your detailed activity. So now you're able to see exactly who's looking at your profile, exactly who's watching your film, uh, if, they're, if they've been in contact with your coach, if you've been promoted to that school. So these are all super beneficial things that happen on our premium plan. And uh, we really recommend that you use that going into your junior and your senior years. So uh, we've talked now about uh, how to narrow down where you should be focusing your efforts on scholastically and athletic, uh, athletically where would be a good fit for you. Uh, we've talked about um, 
uh, you know, scholastically, what makes sense for you to go to school, financially, skill set, talking to your coach, narrowing that down. From there, we've talked about how we're going to get there. You know, are you going to be seen at a tournament? You can be seen at a tournament. You can be seen at a showcase at a camp. Your coach could have a personal connection with somebody, and you can reach out to that person if he's friends with them, or, or uh, using a, a online platform to supplement and to be another tool, a very beneficial tool for you. And we believe, obviously, that field level is the best tool for that because we know college coaches want to speak with the high school club coach first when it comes to uh, the recruitment of a specific athlete. So using field level uh, to empower your coaches to make those connections with those, those colleges in order to give you uh, that great exposure that you need to find more opportunities to play. Uh, then we talked a little bit about what you get for free with field level and then ultimately uh, what you get for premium as well. So now we've talked, I've talked, I've presented, and now I'd love to hear some of your questions. I'm going to uh, try to use the We've got somebody that threw something in the question and answer area. Again, I prefer that we use the, um, the chat feature, which is a little uh, icon, which again, I'll, I'll go ahead and write in there now again. So I wrote, I wrote a quick note in there so you guys can go ahead and uh, write your questions into there and I'll start knocking out uh, these questions and answers. Um, real quickly, I'd like to, uh, I'm going to check the question here that uh, I was just given. Uh, how many athletes have received scholarships by using this program? Um, at this point, we have 60,000 plus athletes uh, that have uh, committed using field level. And I think that number is a little inaccurate because most, a lot of athletes will use our platform and then go ahead and because they, it's been used, it's been used for success. They don't sign back on and let us know where they've decided to commit to. Uh, but uh, I would say uh, we're, we're well into the 80s, thousands, but officially uh, we've got about uh, 60,000 plus have marked committed through field level. Great question though. I'm also gonna give you my contact information. So if you'd like to, to reach out to me, here's that info. What are the questions you recommend in the premium portion for communication to coaches? Uh, Carson, I, I don't understand what your question is. Jill, uh, my daughter is a sophomore. What should she, we be doing in, pro in progress uh, to progress with the recruiting process? Um, I would make sure you talk to your coach about making sure you guys are on the same page. Uh, having her on field level is great. Um, uh, having her on field level is awesome. Um, I recommend that you guys are using the free platform at the moment as she's a sophomore and just building out her profile, getting all of her information and getting film on there, building out her target school list, learning more about the, the recruiting process and just working hard at becoming the best athlete she can be. And then uh, once she starts kicking into gear with uh, the recruiting process, she'll be ahead of the game and, and knowledgeable beyond uh, many of the athletes that she'll be competing with for those, for those spots. So uh, definitely talk to coach, uh, build out your profile, and be ready for that process when she, or be, be ready to start fielding a lot of interest come her junior and senior years. Uh, Edward, how are we different than NCSA? Uh, that is one of the companies that I was referring to today. Again, NCSA is a platform that is more along the lines of a do-it-yourself along with a, a consultant. So they'll have somebody uh, that will consult with you through this process uh, where we are different with them is we believe the coach, your high school and club coach, is the most impactful, most informative person in this process. Just like we all uh, get jobs and get new jobs and we want our previous employers, our previous managers and, and superiors to be our uh, source of recommendations that we get to put on our resume. These athletes have uh, their recommendation source is their coach. They know them the best when it comes to who they are as an athlete and uh, college coaches want to hear from them first, learn about the athletes from them first and uh, uh, the other platforms have a, a model where um, the coach is not very much a part of the process. Uh, Pablo, your daughter is an international student in junior college starting second year. When is the best time to start searching for university now? Um, you should definitely be uh, researching schools now. Uh, again, where, uh, you know, academically where she would fit in, uh, geographically where she would like to play, 
what level she's best, uh, best for and best suited for. These are things you guys should be thinking about uh, as a family. These are also things you should be bringing to your coach's attention uh, when discussing recruiting with them. Uh, Jay, a uh, little bit another another international question. If you are an athlete uh, coming from outside the U.S., does it impact your process? Uh, that that depends on the school and what schools are looking for. School, sport, um, part of the country. These are all things that uh, I would recommend talking with your coach about. And uh, as you guys uh, develop a plan of where you want to go to school geographically and what level of play you believe uh, they can play at, uh, contacting you're having your coach contact those schools to see what uh, the process is gonna be like from bringing you from one part uh, of another country to, uh, to the United States and seeing what process needs to come uh, from that. But again, talk with your coach, research colleges, and then get in contact with them. Carson, I, I guess I'm still having a hard time understanding your question. So let me, let me answer it the way that I, I, the only way that I, feel like I'm understanding. Um, when a high school, when, a, when an athlete, either that's a junior college athlete, a high school athlete, or a club athlete, has a premium account, that also turns premium on for the coach as well uh, when it comes to helping that athlete uh, with the recruiting process. So college coaches, I'm sorry, the high school and club coaches are able to promote an athlete to anybody in the network uh, because that athlete has premium. If they did not have premium, they would only be able to promote that athlete to the colleges that they're connected to. Um, they're able to see recommendations. They're able to see match strength as well when it comes to those athletes. They are also able to see detailed activity, much like the athlete and, and parents are. They're able to see the detailed activity uh, with, that, um, with, with the premium plan that the athlete has turned on for them. So they can see if their promotions are working. They can see if there's a college that they haven't promoted to that's been finding the athlete via the search me method. And they then would be proactive in contacting that college and say, I've seen you look at my athlete five times this week. What can I do as a coach uh, to get you guys together? What can I do as a coach to inform you more about this athlete to help this recruiting process uh, quicken up? Uh, LG, I'm a senior. Is it too late to be in this program? Our LG, uh, answer this, are you an incoming senior, you're going to be a senior, or you've already graduated from high school? Jill, uh, how important is it to college coaches that our daughter is involved in other school clubs activities? Um, I think it's always important for athletes to be multi-sport, multi-functional athletes. Uh, there are college coaches all the time uh, talking about in tons of interviews, if you just Google college coach, uh, you know, multi-sport athletes preferences. Uh, a lot of college coaches definitely prefer young people that are multi-sport athletes and, um, and, and part of different things within their school community. And most coaches encourage that as well. I know as a coach myself, I encourage um, our athletes to uh, be multi-sport athletes when they can, be multi, you know, multi-engaged in different areas in the school, uh, whatever the case may be, whether they want to do performing arts, they want to do music, they want to do art, they want to do you know, some kind of science program, being, uh, being involved is always a good thing. Uh, Pablo, what is the difference between NAIA and the NCAA Division I, Division II divisions? Uh, different sports uh, have different levels of competition, different parts of the country, different conferences. Uh, for the most part, NAIA, I hear a lot of NAIA schools being compared to NCAA Division II level programs. Uh, NCAA Division II level programs, but can also be better uh, than some Division I programs. It all depends on the sport that you play and uh, the different academic uh, standards for those schools. Some, some athletes end up going to uh, Division II, Division III level programs uh, because of the academic um, you know, standards and the academic you know, prowess of those schools. And those schools end up in those programs, maybe a Division III level school, but are better than some Division II, Division I's. It all depends on uh, the sport and uh, the situation. Uh, my child uh, athlete has been contacted without his coach promoting him. So um, Edward, you're on field level, if a college coach has contacted you on field level uh, or your son on field level, son or daughter on field level, uh, that means that whether the coach has promoted them or not, they have, um, 
they have released the contact information. So at one point or another, that college coach has contacted the high school coach and asked for permission to contact the athlete, and they've released that contact information. So again, the coach was still at the center of the process. Uh, LG, you're an incoming senior. No, absolutely not. This is a great time to start using field level. Uh, sure, I wish you were starting to use this a couple years back, but you know, no time like the present. So get on here, fill out your profile, get film on there, work with your coach, have him or her promote you to colleges around the country that you're interested in and get yourself recruited. I did not say the price for premium. Um, that price is $39 a month. Uh, there is no contract for that. You're able to uh, turn that on or off whenever you'd like. We also have an annual plan uh, where you're able to save a little money if you go for a year. Uh, thank you for that question, Adrian. I didn't want to make this too much of a sales pitch on premium. I really wanted to get you guys some information, uh, but I appreciate the, uh, the question there. Jill, how do I motivate our volleyball coach to use field level? Great question. Um, I would contact them. I would talk to them. I encourage everybody here to have a, a conversation with your coach about recruiting um, to, so everyone can be on that same page. Um, but if you'd like, Jill, uh, feel free to contact me. I've got my email address here at jfrench um, at fieldlevel.com. Uh, feel free to email me. Uh, we can talk, and uh, I can, I'm more than happy to reach out to your coach as well. Uh, Edward, a couple of coach, a couple of schools are not connected to my coach. Okay, so if they are, it depends if um, they are not connected. So I don't know if you guys can read this or if you guys are able to see this as well, but a couple of schools are not connected to my coach. Does this hinder my child's ability to be recruited at those schools? Um, so uh, their, your coach not being connected to those college coaches at those schools that your son or daughter is interested in. Um, at the moment, yeah, it would technically be a hindrance because that means that the coach isn't able to promote the athlete to that school if your athlete is on the free plan. So uh, if the coach were uh, to connect with them, they would be then able to promote that athlete or your athlete to those college coaches uh, on the free. Um, if uh, you guys open up premium uh, to your, you as, a, as an account yourself and then that opens up premium plan for the coach as well, uh, he, he or she would then be able to promote your athlete to anybody in the network. So whether he's connected or not, he'd be able to promote that athlete. Now, it's different if that college coach wasn't, or anybody from that program wasn't on field level at all. Uh, that would be a different story. Jill, you're welcome. Thank you for joining today. Any other questions? All right, I'll give it another minute here, and then we will close, close it down. Uh, Jill, I have to, let me scroll up here. Yeah, Jill, I mean, she's going into her sophomore year. Um, we really recommend at field level that athletes start using field level, level at the end of their sophomore year, going into their junior year and or um, you know, once they start playing a varsity sport uh, are the kind of two key things that we, we use as indicators of when it would be a good time. Uh, field level is this, I mean, if you guys are seeing here, we, we provide a lot of functionality and benefit for free. Um, although we need to make money in order to you know, keep the lights on and give me a web camera and a computer to do these webinars. Uh, we do really like to make sure that you know, when athletes are using premium, that there's a, there's a benefit for you. And um, it's great for uh, it's great for athletes to, to use it at the right time. So, uh, yeah, I would go ahead. She's a varsity player. Great. Um, I, yeah, I would, I would recommend doing that um, uh, going into her at the end of her sophomore year. So she'll be going into her junior year, so that summer, and she's going to be in volleyball tournaments and, and showcases and things of that nature with her club. That's when I would recommend turning on premium. Uh, Jay, uh, where is the best place to research the different colleges in terms of their academic and sports programs? 
Uh, you can use our platform to uh, narrow that down. We do have a search feature um, for <laughs> Jill, giving you some love there, Jay. Good question. Um, so uh, yeah, you can use our platform to to look up colleges. We have a drop. We have a uh, filtering system as well, where you can learn about. Uh, you fill in different portions of what you're looking for, and we'll provide uh, some options for you. Going online and researching, there's a tool that I've used in the past called Noodle. Uh, Noodle.com has a, college, a great college search uh, area where you're able to you know see more details about the school, academic standards, tuition, all that stuff. Also, I like that page a lot. Um, but just overall, just you can go to the NCAA site to find out uh, different schools um, around the country that I showed earlier, and I'm going to send you that link um, tomorrow in our follow-up email. Um, but yeah, look at schools that are. Um, uh, Edward here just put in uh, that he's used uh, uh, I, niche niche.com. So yeah, there's various areas for you to to go do college search research. So if we're not playing a varsity sport, sport, there's no reason for signing up. Um, I'm assuming LG, what level are you playing at? Are you a junior college athlete, um, a high school athlete? Okay, so LG, if you're a high school athlete, um, uh, yeah, once you hit varsity, but when you, once you start hitting varsity, you should start using it. Uh, whether you start playing varsity as a junior or a senior is when uh, I would start using premium. Um, but even if you are, uh, even though you're saying you're not a JV player, but JV players, the younger players, freshmen, sophomores, should be using field level with our free platform, building out their profile, building out their target school lists, adding film, being searchable, uh, you know, understanding the recruiting process. All right, any other questions? And again, for those of you that have, that have hung on, that haven't ans asked anything yet, I appreciate your time. Thanks for listening today. Um, I do have my contact information here, uh, jfrench at fieldlevel.com for emails. Uh, my phone over here as well. Um, so if you have any questions that you want to shoot on the side, feel free. For volleyball, is there a way to be playing more than four years with the academic more than four years? Pablo, I'm not sure what you're asking there. Uh, what do you recommend for posting volleyball videos? Uh, I recommend adding as much film as possible to field level. Uh, you're able to um, you're able to uh, add those by uh, taking the link from the web page that you store your film on and then putting that into the profile, that'll bring up the box where you can watch the video straight from, uh, from the profile. And so you're able to see that. Uh, what kind of web pages? I personally, uh, I've been asked this a bunch. Uh, we, we don't have a site that we always recommend or anything yet, uh, but we're able to bring that link in from YouTube. We're able to bring that link in from Crossover, Huddle. I've personally used Huddle a bunch because I'm a football coach and, and we're, uh, Huddle is a big football company. Uh, they have all, they've branched out into other sports as well and doing a great job with that. But um, yeah, Huddle has got a great opportunity, great uh, platform for you to make highlight film, edit the film, and then all you need to do is take that link and throw it into your profile. So yeah, again, Jill, um, Huddle, YouTube, you build it, you, you either can build that, 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 that film there, you can store it there, and then you're able, all you need to do is take the link and put it into your profile, and then the athletes are able to have all their pertinent information on their left-hand side of their profile information, their film, and their coach written evaluation about them, all in the same place for those coaches at the college level to see. It is fun, Jill. Glad you think so too. All right, guys. Any other questions? I'm starting to see people uh, uh, fall off and, and leave the leave the meeting.
So with that said, uh, I appreciate all of your time today. Uh, the fact that you guys are um, spending your time to learn about this is great. Uh, whether you're parents or athletes, you guys are, are really doing a great job and just spending time learning about this. So I appreciate it. And if you guys have anything else for me, please feel free to contact me. And uh, have a great day. Thanks, guys.